Hello. So, it is time for UBL Season 6 Power Rankings. Now, I would have been joined by other people, but this is the second time I'm having to do this. Um, when I originally did this, I actually did this with Fat Rat. And... Yeah, and then I messed up the audio on it, so it sounds like I'm just talking to nothing. <laughs> so, because you can't hear Fat Rat. Um, so I, I, I apologise to Fat Rat and, you know, everyone just for, taking, for this taking longer to come out because it was ready and then I looked at the audio and I saw that it was not ready to go out and I just wasn't happy with the final product. So here we are again. So... Um, UBL Season 6 PRs for singles, the better division, um, the clearly superior division, um, definitely better than VGC, 100%, uh, VGC is a non-division, doesn't really count, singles is the only thing that matters, clearly. For legal reasons, this is a joke. Um, <laughs> Uh, go check out uh, Kana's video on the VGC divisions if you want to, to understand why that it uh, why I'm saying that. And, you know, in general, because VGC um, is something that I'm in as well. Um, which is you go check out my own analysis on the channel for both my teams for the singles and VGC for UBL this season. Um, so, uh, with that out of the way... Um, as for the format of the league, it's 9 to, 11, uh, 9 to 11 Pokemon, 110 points. can show you on the front of the dock here, 9 to 11 Pokemon, 110 points. No legacy moves here, that's just basically meaning no cut moves. Um, something you haven't put on the dock, but I think we probably should, is nothing new from Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Anything that's in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is not going to be allowed. Because this league started before Brilliant, Shine, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl came out, or B, BDSP. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then, you know, normal smoke and claws, all that good stuff. No sand veil, no snow cloak, no accuracy stuff. Um, all that good stuff. Um, so, um... With that out of the way, let's get into the PRs because it's going to take me a while regardless. So we're going to be going in draft order. Um, I have a little dock over here just so we can see the actual tiers. I don't have anything fancy. One, because I never had anything fancy before and I'm not doing it again. <laughs> and two, because I literally woke up like five minutes ago and I'm saying we're doing this now. So here we are. Um, starting off with the British... Cubesians, which I'm going to, that's a butchered pronunciation if I've ever heard it, but I'm not going to be calling out for the rest of the video, because it is actually a coach we have met before. There are a lot of new coaches in this league, but some of them are quite familiar, and this one is certainly familiar. This is Parik. Um, Parik actually got um, top four last season. Um, they made it through round one playoffs, and then they lost to myself um, before... Uh, before falling. Uh, they had a very good season last season. I think they got... F I want to say they got third overall. But I might be mistaken in that. Also, you may hear me taking drinks. But that's because I'm going to be talking for at least an hour and a half. So, forgive me. Um, so, their team consists of Dragapult, Mega Medicham, Mandibuzz, Nidoking, Heatran, Tapu Bulu, Milotic, Lickitung, Rotomfan, and Swilix. A little bit like the last season... Their drafters lean towards top end side, um, where they've kind of had seven really strong Pokemon and then rounded out with some weaker Pokemon. Um, but this time it's a lot better. Um, this time it's incredible. Dragapult, uh, Mega Medicham, and Mandibuzz is actually something I had um, in one. Of, in, in fact, my first singles draft league coming back to the, uh, singles, um, and it's a really deadly combination. Um, his Dragapult plus Mega Medi is scary. <laughs> it's very scary. Um, and then you got the Mandibuzz for the defensive Dark type um, for for Dragapult uh, and for Mega Medi. 
And the only other thing that you really need to help patch that up is something to deal with Steel types. And what do you know? You got Neo King and Heatran, two very good Pokémon into. <laughs> uh, so does say Steel types? You need something to patch up the fairy weakness between the top three, uh, between Dragapult, Mega Medicham, and Mandibuzz. And Neo King and Heatran do that extremely well. Not only that, to go along with the Heatran, then you go along into the Tapu Bulu, and then rounding out the Fire Water Grass Core, you got the Milotic, which is an incredibly bulky defensive Water type. Not only that, unlike last season, their quote-unquote weaker pieces are actually still good. Uh, Lickitung is perfectly viable to bring some weeks, can, can wish, can stealth rocks, is a very viable low-tier Pokemon to bring into some weeks, especially if you're worried about things like Spectria, which I believe was actually drafted. Um, always good to have extra answers into Spectria. Uh, Rotom Fan is actually a very reasonable electric type. Uh, gets Defog and can do pretty much all you, do, you need to do for the Rotom forms. Um, just with one of the... He just doesn't have a great... Doesn't have an ability. But Electric Flying is still an amazing typing. So... Um, if this thing got Hurricane as well as Air Slash, I think it would be a lot better. But, you know... We can't ask for it a lot. And then obviously there's Swirlix as well, which gives the team options for webs. Which webs for a team like this with Mega Medicham and Nido King and even Tapu Bulu um, is very, very crazy. Um, in the past, I think we've kind of talked about uh, Tapu Bulu not being the best of Mons. Um, but because of the synergy with this team, it's crazy good. Um, because Tapu Bulu likes to invite poison types. And I'm looking at the rest of the team, and <laughs> yeah, sure, Poison types really want to come against Nido King and Heatran and Mega Medicham. So, um, while Poison coverage may be here, here and there, um, you got great switchings into Poison types, and the defensive coverage between Mandibuzz, Heatran, and Milotic makes this team's defensive potential really good. Thrown in with things like Rotom Fan and Lickitung. Um, and then the offensive potential, very little is going to outspeed Dragapult and not much wants to switch into it. Plus then it can just pivot out into things like a defensive piece if it wants to. So some hazards, you know, there's not much of it. It's just really, it's going to be Nidoking, Lickitung, um, for Rockers. The Lickitung you wouldn't expect to come that often. And then Nidoking, but that doesn't really want to set the hazards. Um, as f uh, Or you can just go into, you know, one of the offensive pieces, you know, like Mega Medicham or Nidoking. Um... As for the removal, I think removal is probably the... Like, the hazard game is okay. I'd say the removal is probably one of the weaker parts. But with how aggressive this team is, and also just Mandibuzz is going to come to pretty much every game anyway. Um, like, it's not that bad. Because it's going to be mainly Mandibuzz and then Rotom and Fan. And that's it. That's your removal. Um, but you can definitely find room for one of the two flying types on the team. Um, speaking of types... Types overall are really, really good. They're only missing a couple, and I'd say the couple that they're missing aren't really that big of a deal. So, even off the bat, I can't really see any major types missing. You know, they've got Fairy Dragon Steel, they've got Fire Water Grass, they've got a, they've got a good Dark type, um, even a good good Psychic type. They've got so many of the good types um, that I just can't see anything immediately. The only types I'm noticing that just aren't there are Bug Rock and Ice, and some of the, those, those are some of the worst types in the game. So, you know, it's not like they're missing bad types. Let me move this up so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Um, so, yeah, like, the team's incredible. Uh, the speeds are a little weird, um, but sometimes that just happens. This happened with me when I used uh, Dragapult with this team composition, with uh, the Dragapult, Mega Medicham, and Mandibuzz. Um... Where you just kind of like, you haven't been getting many champ, and then you jump straight to Dragapult. And that can be an issue sometimes, because there are a lot of Pokemon between Dragapult and Mega Medicham in terms of speed. Um, and also, even then, between Mega Medicham and the next Pokemon is Nidoking. And there's again a lot of Pokemon between that that can be, it can be kind of awkward. But I wouldn't say that big of a, oh, sorry, Rotom Fan, excuse me. Um, very rare that Rotom Fan will run max speed, but uh, it can happen. Um, yeah, um, this, like, the speeds I say, the speeds I say the removal are probably two of the few weaknesses of this team, but due to this team's potential aggressive nature, as well as, like, its removal is reliable, is what I'd say, um, it does force that Mandibuzz or Rotom Fat will have to use 
a move slot on it, and especially because Mandibuzz can do a lot of things, you know. It can Whirlwind, it can Taunt, it can. It needs to heal, it wants to Pivot, Foul Play, Brave Bird, they're, they're all options. So finding the right four moves for it um, are going to be a bit, maybe a bit of a tight issue sometimes. So sometimes you may need the Rotom Fan, but also, you know, Rotom Fan isn't always the best Pokemon in the matchup, and you don't always want to be bringing Door Flying. Especially if you want to at least bring Dragapult, because then, you know, the ice weaknesses start to stack up. And the ice weaknesses can be a bit, a bit of an issue on this team. Because if you're bringing, you know, Port, Mega Medicham, Mana Buzz, Neo King, Tapu Bulu, Heatran as your six, you know, that's four ice weeks you're bringing. So, I don't remember what they brought week one. Uh, week one has been played by this point, um, which is why, you know, it's taken a bit longer. Um, but I've cleared all the information out. And by cleared all the information out, I made out, I mean, I made a second dog. Because <laughs> I didn't want to accidentally remove all the information and then not be able to put it all back. So, I just made a second dog. That's why at the top here it says copy of UBL Season 6 singles because um, I just made an extra version of the dock. Um, so, but, uh,. Yeah, I, for, for where I'm going to be putting this team, I'm also going to be following where me and Rat ended up putting all the teams. Um, Rat isn't unfortunately able to give their thoughts, but um, I'm trying to, like, we we have reasonings for why they are going in the place that they are. And this team is genuinely incredible. It's got a really, really well-rounded offensive and defensive core, as well as the weak, weaker Pokemon on the team still having a lot of viability. It's an S-tier team. Um... It is just an S-tier team. Um, the team is very, very strong. Overall, like, a, a team with Dragapult is already, like, super high up just because it's Dragapult. It's super versatile. It's super fast. Um, can go so many different routes. Um, pair with Mega Medicham. These two together just are an incredible offensive core because, like, you know, Dragapult doesn't like dark types. And then you have a really strong fighting type. Now I'm Mega Medicham, who can just break them. Um, so, and, you know, Mega Medicham doesn't really like... <laughs> Mega Medicham just doesn't like things faster than it, to be honest. Um, but the main thing is bulky psychic types. And boy, does Dragapult love eating up bulky psychic types with stab shadow balls from choice specs. Or just, you know, going Dragon Dance Phantom Force, and then nothing can switch into that. So, you know. Or even Choice Band. Uh, I think uh, someone ran Choice Band against me once. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's an incredible team. Parade's a very, very good player as well. Though I'm not tending to judge it off that as well as we, because I don't know as many of the people in this league. Uh, Rat does. Uh, Rat can, would be able to vouch for them a bit, bit more. I can't, unfortunately. Um, so, um, that is one of the unfortunate things. But... You know, I, I will do my best uh, to to keep things, uh, you know, neutral. Um, but again, I'm going off of what me and Rat said um, in the in the failed take of this. So, but yeah, uh, Paraic S tier team. Uh, I will be ordering within tiers, but uh, for now, Paraic is it's 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 such a strong team overall. So, next up we have that's. You didn't see anything. Um, <laughs> we have the Leering Lycanrocks. Um, so, let's find Leering Lycanrocks. Leering Lycanrocks by a new coach. This is Legonene. I'm so sorry. I, I'm still really out of it. Uh, Leering Lycanrocks and Lego. Um, their team consists of Urshifu, Single Strike, Jirachi, Mega Swampert, Snorlax, Togekiss, Rotom Moat, Politoed, Kingdras, Typhlosion, and Oridos. Um, so, this team is unfortunately a lot worse. Although saying it's just a worse team than S tier is just basically saying it's not in S tier. Um, <laughs> there's kind of a few issues with this team, to be honest. Um, Rain is awesome. Um, for those who actually don't know, I actually was planning on drafting Rain myself for uh, for this season. Um, I actually was planning on going, you know, with with Mega Swampert um, and you know go, going with the whole Rain route. Um, 
But this is one of the team. This is a team that I can say is why I didn't end up going rain. Uh, because the Pokemon I wanted to pair with it was Tornado's Varian. And that's a naturally fast Pokemon um, that does not re uh, rely on rain, you know, to have speed. Whereas this team doesn't have that, it's got to have, if it's neat, if it wants anything faster than base 100 between the Jirachi or the Typhlosion, it has to have rain up, um, for the Swift Swim users of May as one put in Kingdra. Um, like, it's just so slow. Obviously you've got repeat typings, I'm not going to dock that on a rain team, because it's rain. Like, that's part of the course. Like, you're gonna have multiple water types, no matter what you do. So, that's just thematic for the team. Um, not even thematic, that's synergistic for the team. Um, is what it is. Um, you need, you need, a, you need a rain setter and a rain sweeper. And they're all water types, for the most part. So, like, yeah, that's just fine. Like, no, I'm not gonna judge that. It's more so the fact that no, there's nothing naturally fast on this team. Like I say, the fastest Pokemon is Jirachi at base 100. And, like, Parade had a Dragapult that can outspeed everything, that can kind of at least make up for that. This team has has to rely on Rain, and Rain can be teched for. Um, maybe not in this league, but I've at least seen in other leagues, people have run things like Sunny Day Hydreigon. <laughs> you know, things like that will, will come just to make sure that rain can be shut down especially when it is one of the if not main focuses of the team um um speaking of main focuses it kind like i understand needing a fire type but when your fire type's main purpose is to launch scarf eruptions in rain it's not the best of ideas with typhlosion there are plenty of other got good fire types um, even dropping Oreos, which sure does give the team webs, um, and Toxic Spikes, I believe. It's not a very good Pokemon. Uh, I believe I made the suggestion in the previous take to actually drop Typhlosion for a regular Rapidash, um, and drop Oreos for something else. Um, because that is an actual, an, a fire type with actual coverage that is fine with using coverage. Things like, a uh, high horsepower, and Wild Charge, and Mega Horn, and things to that nature. It actually has moves that aren't just Scarf Eruption that make the Pokemon what it is. Um, so, just small things to think about. Oh, it's also a bit faster as well. It gives the team a bit extra speed that the team desperately needs. Um, so, um, and even then, like, some of the other things about the team, like, the Hazard game... Like, for the most part, it's just Jirachi setting rocks. Um, and the removal isn't... It's fine. It's Togekiss and Rotom Mo. It's only two removers. Um, same as Paraic. Uh, with one of them being a Rotom form. Very reliable re remover. Togekiss, very reliable remover. But then you got to pick one to bring. And, uh... Yeah. Um... The team does also just get 6 0 by Kieran. Um, while it's a meme um, that every team can get 6 0 by Kieran, this team is actually pretty close to it being guaranteed. <laughs> because it's got Togekiss and Rotom Mo, and then it's got its two water types being times 4 weak to freeze dry, and then there's Politoed, and you're only things fast. You do have some things faster with things like Urshifu, Singer Strike, and Jirachi, and things like that, but you know, it's. it's Freeze Dry is going to rinse this team, and there's, other than Jirachi, there's not a switch into Freeze Dry. Or there's Snorlax. Snorlax can switch into Freeze Dry very well. Um, but I just don't like Snorlax here. I really am not the biggest fan of Snorlax here. I think, like, just everything Snorlax wants to do, like Mega Swampert also wants to do, um, just in a slower, bulkier fashion. It can play a bulkier role on the team, but I just feel like Snorlax doesn't really fit here. Um... Urshifu is an amazing Pokemon, can't underestimate Urshifu at any time, and, you know, it has the possibility of being with Webs, though I'm still not the biggest fan of Ariados. <laughs> um, uh, so, like, the, the Hazard game is pretty much Jirachi. Yes, Mega Swampert could set up Webs, but then you're un massively underutilizing what Mega Swampert is there for, which is to be a very 
offensive late game rate and sweeper for the team. Um, while it can be just using Swampert as a bulky Pokemon, um, it, again, it's just not making the most use of what Mega Swampert is actually good at. So, um, you know, it's, it, that would be like saying, dude, you you would use Jirachi every week as a as a wish one, as a wish support one. Which that's great, you can do that, but Jirachi has a million other things that it's great at, so. Um, like, the, so, between the lacking on hazards, the not great speeds, not the best type synergy, again, I'm not going to dock it too much for that, uh, like, rain is good, um, and so I, I don't want to dock it too much on that, it's more so the fi fact that like just it's just a fire type you need a better fire type for this team <laughs> like um i don't know um then the speed is such a big deal like sure you have rain but because rain is so easily techable for especially when that's one of the weak you know one of the main focuses of the team like you have to give something a scarf you know rotom mo or urshifu um a scarf uh, or Jirachi, you've got to give something a scarf just to make up for the lack of speed on the team. Um, it's not the greatest, but I think it, it, it has very much the room to improve. Um, as I already said, just pick up Rapid Dash and it already becomes at least somewhat better. Um, maybe swap out Snorlax for something, because I'm just not the biggest fan of Snorlax here. Most of the other ones I think are fine, it's just I don't... I just don't know how well they synergize well together here. Um, maybe I'm not giving my best reasoning here. Um, I do apologize for not making you know sense why I'm not the biggest fan of this team. But hopefully I've at least outlined the main points of not the best hazard game, not great speeds. Um, I would also argue quite physical. No, not really. We'll get to, we'll get to the physical teams. Trust me, we'll get to the physical teams. Um, because Kingdra's, Kingdra's very special, Rosen is special, Tojik is a special, Jirachi can go either, you know, I I'm, I'm, wouldn't say that, so. But, regardless, even if I I'm, apologize, I can't articulate it well enough, um, on why, um, this team will be going in the C tier. Um, maybe looking at some of the, uh, some of the other teams, sorry. Um, can't spell. Uh, we'll maybe hopefully show why uh, this team isn't C tier. Um, which will we be looking at that next? Let's find out because we do, like I say, we're going to go across all. We are looking at the Flower Man Fideons! Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. So, Flower Man Fideons, and that's not the Flower Man Fideons. There we go. Flower Man Fideons, um, coached by Lyric. The first of two UBL mods. Um, there's only actually three of us in here. Most of the UBL mods are actually playing VGC. If I had all the UBL mods, I think are actually playing VGC this time around. Um, but a couple of us are playing singles. I think it's me, uh, me, Lyric, and Fat Rat are all playing singles. And yeah, Lyric's team's insane. Um, Lyric's team's actually insanely good. Um, their team consists of Mega Lade, Toxapex, Mamoswine, Tangrove, Skarmory, Hydreigon, Slurpuff, Torkoal, and Boltund. Oh, Lyric. Oh, Lyric. Why, why do you do this? Um, Lyric has been complimented on their team building in the past, and I think this is a prime example of where it all shines through. Nine Pokemon, you know, it means it's got it's, it's going to be top heavy. But despite that, the top just works. It just all works. Um, incredible offensive and defensive synergy, all around. Let's talk about hazards. You've got Torkoal and Mammoth Swine for rocks. And Skarmory, sorry. Um, well, Mammoth Swine doesn't always want to set rocks. Um, Skarmory and Torkoal, absolutely. Great defensive pieces. Skarmory also gets spikes. And then Toxapex has Toxic Spikes. 
All of these are great things to help Whittle down, but all three of the main offensive breakers and cleaners of this team being Hydreigon, Megalade, and Mamoswine. Three Pokemon that all have great synergy. <laughs> Megalade in a similar light, but not as much to me. Uh, Mega Medicham doesn't always like the bulkiest of psychic types, and Hydreigon will eat them alive. <laughs> Not only that, you've got the great offensive coverage between Mamoswine of Earthquake plus High School Crash, plus it has Freeze Dry, plus Superpower, plus Knock Off, um, and all of these offensive Pokemon are extremely dangerous. Um, Slipuff also gives the team Sticky Webs. <laughs> So it has all the hazards and sticky webs with Mamoswine and Hydreigon and to some extent Megalade is extremely terrifying, especially on a good web setter like Slurpuff. While it's not always going to be able to set up webs just because, you know, it's it's Slurpuff and, you know, sometimes it will just die. Um, if it wants to be a bulky one and not just like lead focus sash, um, you know, the, the team may... Uh, may not be able to keep those webs up, but because the team can put on enough offensive pressure a lot of the time, it's very dangerous. And I didn't really talk about it too much, but the defensive core between this team is insane. You've got the regenerator core between Toxapex and Tangrowth, which is just bonkers, bulky, between those two. You've got great resist between those two, and anything that would be, you know, caught out uh, that might be good, Skarmory can just come into, or Torko can just come into, um, Torkoal also gives the team extra removal between that, uh, that's Rapid Spin, as well as uh, Skarmory's Defog and even Hydreigon's Defog, which is perfectly a reasonable option on bulkier sets. Um, the team just synergizes so well offensively and defensively together. The only Pokemon that's a bit of an outlier that I haven't really mentioned is Boltund, which is just a fast electric type, really, that I'm not the biggest fan of. Um, it's, you know, it's there for a type and it's there for being faster than Mega Lade. Um, if they want to use Boltum, by all means, I'm just not a fan of it. I prefer all the fast electric types, things like Jolteon. Um, I much prefer, but they probably don't want to go that fast, really. Um, or Jolteon might have been taken. Or Boltum might not have been uh, in the same price range. Let's have a quick look. Bolton. Bolton was... Bolton was six points... Dude, Jolteon's right there. I, I I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe they just prefer Bolton. I'm not sure. But um, I don't know. I probably I would prefer Bol uh, prefer Jolteon to Bolton. Um, but maybe it's something personal preference. I'm not sure. But Bolton's the only Pokemon to me that it's a bit of an outlier in the team that just doesn't fit as well. Um, as like some of the other Pokemon. Maybe I can be proven wrong on Bolton. I'm just not sure. I've never really seen or I've never seen it do anything ever. So, you know, sue me for you know lack of results. But uh, the rest of the team is just bonkers good. The rest of the team is bonkers bonkers good. Um, again, Megalade is not a Pokemon you can mess around with. Um, you have to be ready for Megalade. You have to be ready for Hydreigon in some way. Um, and it's like, well, cool, you know, just make sure you have something for fairies. And you have two incredibly good Pokemon that switches into fairies between Skarmory and Toxapex. Um, very, very easily. Very defensive Pokemon that can switch into, uh, into fairy types. And even Torkoal, all three of them can switch into fairy types. And do something that the fairy type, if it's passive, does not want to stay in on. You know, Skarmory can just spike, stack, and whirlwind. Toxapex can be incredibly annoying and just not die because that's what Toxapex loves to do. And Torko can also just set rocks and start just going for lava plumes and stop burning things. Um, or scorching his android, even just whatever it wants. Um, the team just, it works so well with all of the great hazard game. The pretty reasonable removal especially considering the fact that it probably wants to be keeping up the hazard for the most part and has a pretty solid rapid spirit in Torkoal um there's often going to be running the heavy duty boots so it's not going to be affected by the opposing hazards anyway can come in rapid spin and just uh just get out if it needs to um if the team did have sun synergy it would, i think this team would be bumped up even more um 
But there is no synergy, uh, like sun synergy with the Torkoal, but I could definitely see it. Even just minor synergies between just like buffing up Hydreig and Flamethrower. And just having the option to just counter weather with, with having Torkoal. Isn't the worst, there are a couple weather teams in here. So, um, yeah, that, uh, like this team is insane. Um, so, um, this is, if you haven't guessed already, um, also just speeds, I briefly touch on them. As I said, the Bolton's kind of capping out the top end, but then you got Mega Laid into Hydreigon, not that unreasonable of a gap. Um, dropping into Mamoswine, I mean, it's not the best, but because the speeds at least around the upper end are like relatively close together, it's still pretty solid. Um, and again, they've tried to cover their top end speed with the with the bolt hunt. This is going in S tier, and actually, between me and Rat, this was a tough decision. Um, we actually put Lyric above Paraic. Um, call is crazy. Um, uh, but yeah, um, this team's just offensive and defensive synergy is something that we both kind of end up liking a little bit more, um, than Paraic's. Um, there's a lot of things I do like about Paraic's team, um, but I think the Hazard game is such a big difference. The Hazard game and I think just the, uh, the closest speed tiers overall, um, I think it's something that at least makes me prefer a little bit more. Obviously, I can't. I think this is more of the offensive team, I guess. But I, I, I could, I could see arguments for either. Um, but for us, um, we decide to put Lyric above Paraic. Um, and this is no disrespect, disrespect to Paraic's team, <laughs> by no means. These two uh, being in S tier is no. Is it, it? There's a reason for it. There is very much a reason for it. They are easily top of the top um, when it comes to these teams, um, and hopefully you can at least understand why. Again, even if I'm not able to articulate it well uh, that well, um, just between the offensive and defensive synergy, Pokemon aren't going to be dying, and then you can get very uh, when other Pokemon are forced in to help deal with these defensive. Uh, threats you can just go into your offensive potential that is not exactly frail and just start just going in especially because the offensive threats are quite versatile as well between scarf and life orb um such bulky mammoth swine bulky eye dragon with potential nasty plot life or free attacks um scarf specs all that good stuff and then uh, Gallade can go sub bulk up, can just go sword stance. It can, it just will just win games. Um, so, yeah, it, this is an S tier team, and at least between me and Rat, we decided to put it above Lyric. Oh, sorry, above Paraic. So, <sighs> all right. So next up, we have the Mogul Mercenaries, a returning coach in Vitrina. So Vitrina has a team of. Demand Dom Gala, Victini, Kaliscore, Megalopony, Lordius, Serena, Duraludon, Charlesant, Electivire, and Galarian Lainu. First of all, Vitrine, I'm still very upset. You took my child away from me. How dare you? You will perish. <laughs> How dare you take my forges away from me? How dare. You also understand that Borges was more expensive in this league literally because of me. I wish I was making this up, but when we was suggesting point changes for this league, I put forward Forges and people said in any other league, we would say yes, we'll drop it down, but no, we're keeping it at 11 points because I'm in the league. The, I was literally going to be handicapping myself by picking Florges because it's more expensive here than anywhere else. And you still picked it away from me. You took it away from me. You took my child. How could you take my child? 
Anyway, um, moving on. Um, other than that, though, this team is in the testing. Um, let's not underestimate the the power of this team. Like, just pure raw offensive potential. Dom Gallo hits like a truck. Victini hits like a truck. Megalopony hits pretty hard. Duraludon hits pretty hard. Serena can pr hit pretty hard. Light Divide can hit pretty hard. But a lot of those Pokemon aren't very good. <laughs> um, I'm not a big fan of Dom Gala, personally. Um, I think it's very one-dimensional and feels like it gets stopped by a bulky water. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, the team is also... You remember that thing where I was saying, like, there's teams that are very physical? This is a team that's very physical, because you look at the top four, and for the most part, all four of those are physical. You can say Special Victini for sure, that's absolutely reasonable. Um, but the only dedicated special attacker on the team that's supposed to be offensive is Duraludon. And I'm sorry, I still don't, I've never seen Duraludon do anything. <laughs> I've been in probably at least 10 leagues, and I've still never seen Duraludon do anything. Like, this, it, it gives the team the steel and a dragon to pair with the Lodgers, but I don't know. I've just never seen it do anything. It gives the team a Stealth Rocker, which it would be lacking in otherwise, because otherwise it's just Gliscor, which Gliscor can do definitely more than just set up Stealth Rocks. Its versatility is what makes it so good because it doesn't just have to set up Stealth Rocks, it can actually Sword Dance and be bulky enough to do so. Um, but again, it's also another physical attacker, which the team already really thrives in. The power of this team is in unreal. It's really, really good. And the defensive Pokemon are actually pretty solid as well, between Flaugers and Jellicent. Um, even Serena can be made pretty bulky. Um, I know obviously Glide Score as well. So, like, the defensive Pokemon are actually really good. It's actually the offense that I'm actually not the biggest fan of. Um... Just because, again, other than Duraldon and the special Victini that almost feels forced to come, it means that Victini can't really be used in a versatile way. It's forced to go special. Just because otherwise the team is just physical. It's just physical between Darm, Gliscor, Megalopony, Serena, and Electivire. They're all physical Pokemon. Glys Electivire can go mixed, but then again, that's that's kind of like using Mamoswine in a mixed way. Where you're using... Or, uh, or Hydreigon, where you use it in a mixed way, where it's, it's got reasonable of its other stat. But you're basically going to be using it for a coverage move, or just to hit something on the on the other stat, where you, in, you know, you're expecting some a physically defensive ground type to come in, and you hit it with a special move. But I don't even know what Electivire would even get. That would actually be wanting to hit, I think, maybe Grass Knot? Might be good. Gr Grass Knot, no hidden powers. Nope, uh, I'm seeing absolutely nothing that you'd want to hit a physical ground type with. Physical offensive ground type with. Other than Ice Punch, maybe. So, um, like I say, the defensive pieces I quite like. Gliscor, Jellicent, and Forges all have great synergy, um, as well as even Serena. Like, if you throw Serena in there as a reasonably good defensive piece, um, that covers up the like the one main weakness between the Jellicent and the Gliscor, being that neither resists grass. Um, then you've got the Serena. Um, and even the removal isn't actually awful because the two, the two removers of the team are very reliable. Florges and Gliscor can do it very, very easily. Um, and obviously Florges is an amazing wish pass, so Florges is just amazing in general. Um, as much as many people will disagree, I, I do very much like Florges. It wasn't already apparent. Um, and it does give a, uh, a nice bulky wish passer to some of the uh, Pokemon that, while can heal by themselves, would appreciate an extra boost sometimes between Gliscor and Jellison. Just, you know, when they do get low, they can heal back up very, very quickly. As I say, it's the offense that I'm not the biggest fan of because it's just all physical. Um, Me uh, Megalop and Darm Gala are very, very good. And especially if you, you know, give, give a scarf to Darm Gala and it will just go in sometimes. Um, Megalop, just same deal, except, you know, without the scarf, it will just go in sometimes. Bikini as well, all three of them are very, very good at going in. Um... Lining Galar, I'm 
kind of disregarding, but I think it was a one point Pokemon. And just means the team has a dark and a normal type, which does. Well, I mean, I already had a normal type for, spe uh, for you know, for Spectre in the, terms of, in the form of Metal Opony. But, um, yeah, like, it's not the best Pokemon. So, you know, there's no other hazards. It's just between the two Stealth Rockers, and one of them I don't really like. In Duraludon, Gliscor's fine, but then again, it, that means you're basically running Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, Rooster you turn every week, and then, you know, then you've got Florges on Defog every week. Or, you know, Serena. Serena can Rapid Spin as well, and that's perfectly reasonable as well, to be honest. So the removal, I think, is fine. It, um... It's the the very limited hazard game. Um, the speeds speeds are in a similar situation to um, Paraic, um where they've kind of got a base 100 Pokemon, a couple of them actually, uh, but no, it's notably between Victini and then jump up to Mega Lopony. Technically, not as big of a gap as between you know Mega Medicham and Dragapult, which is what Paraic has. Um, you know, not as big of a gap, it's only a 35 point gap instead of a 42 point gap. But still a very, very, very big gap and a lot of Pokemon can fit between those speed tiers. So it's something to consider for sure. So, then you know, you got your 95 speed Pokemon, then dropping down to 85. There are actually three Pokemon 95 speed, but that's a little iffy. Um, but then you drop down to 85 and then 75, and those speed tiers are good. Um, in the lower ends, it's just, you know, something a little bit faster than Victini would also be appreciated that isn't Megalopony to help, f help fill out those speeds, so. But I understand the plight of not picking fast Pokemon, to be honest. Um, I'm bad at it myself, um, so, <laughs> you know, I can't judge on that too much really, but it's in an objective standpoint, I have to. Um, don't worry, I'll be judging my own team as well, and that's in similar regard, so, you know, um, for this team, um, it is better than, um, the Luring Lycan Rocks, because, one, they actually have naturally fast speed, um, and two, the offense, you have to, you have to respect the offense, you can respect, you have to respect this offense as well, to be fair, and rain, but it can be teched for, this is just pure offense, um, with some re pretty good bulky pieces. Again, I like I say, I prefer the bulk of this team, the, the defensive pieces of this team. I just don't like the offense, but it, it does have to be respected. Between Dominant and Gala, Gala Victini, and Mega Lopony, you have to respect that offense. And I guess to a reasonable expense, extent, you have to respect uh, Duraludon and like to buy. And Serena, to be fair. Even Serena, I would, I would respect more than Duraludon I like to buy due to its coverage and actual reasonable bulk on the special side. So, and potential to boost its speed with Rapid Spin. So, you know. Um, this is going to be going in the B tier. Um, I hate how I have the caps lock on. So yeah, uh, that will be going in B tier. Um... Like I say, I actually quite like the defensive piece of the team. Just the offense. I, there just needs to be a special attacker in there somewhere. <laughs> it would help the team a lot. So Next up. Where are we? We are at the Wobbly Wishcash. Which I believe, other than a Lego Nene or Lego, um, is, a, is our next new coach. Um... So, um, though I believe this is actually one that Rat knows, this is the Fedora Gamer, um, or Fedora. Um, so, again, this is another one where I don't know them as well, so I can't say for them as much, but Rat knows them and I believe says that they are actually good players, so. I will take their word for it. Rat knows what he's talking about. Sometimes. Not all the time, but definitely sometimes. Um... <laughs> And that team consists of Tornado's Ferian, Tapu Fini, Mega Agron, Haxorus, Crocodile, Ordino, Miss Magius, Celebi, Embor, and Rotom Frost. So, I'm trying to think on what to say about this team. Um, um, 
on paper, I actually quite like it. I think is when you kind of start to think about it a little bit more, is when things start to get a little bit iffy. There's some a little, there's some weird anti synergies, which aren't the greatest, but yeah. Um, I think one thing to note is if we go over to the stats here, and we kind of look at the physical attackers, and we kind of look at the special attackers, and we start to see a little bit of a pattern. The best special attacker on the team is Tornado Spherian, which is. You know, it's good sometimes of being a great special attacker, but oftentimes it's going to be playing a bulky support role. It absolutely can go nasty plot sets. Um, okay, uh, so then we go to the next one down, which are Rotom Frost, which is usually more of a defensive defunding piece, but definitely can go offensive if it wants to. And Miss Magius, definitely can be very good. And then there's Embol, which is more of a physical attacker, and Celebi, which is... I guess either, and that's it. And then it's Tapu Vinny. The team's physical. The team much prefers its physical attackers. Between Crocodile and Embor and Mega Agron and Haxorus, and I'd even argue Taunt T. <laughs> and even Celebi, because Celebi gets Swords Dance. Um, though Celebi also gets Calm Mind, so it can do either setup. Um, Celebi's also just a weird Pokemon. Um. I've always thought Celebi should always do better than it does, um, but it just never seems to perform. Hopefully I can get proven wrong here so I can actually draft it in the future, because I'd, I'd love to. But being times four weak to bug is definitely an issue. So, yeah. Um, and, like, the, the synergy between Tapu Fini and uh, all the physical attackers definitely makes sense. Meaning you can't burn them, you know, Crocodile and Hactorus. Um, a Mega Agron, uh, none of them can be burned, which is really handy, but Hexorus often runs a Lumberry anyway, so I guess that's fine, but the other awkward part is it actually turns off Mega Agron's only form of healing for this team, other than the wish passing of Mega Ordino, which is not the best wish passer. It's alright, um, it's certainly not bad. But it's also weak to fighting, which, if it's a special fighting attack, it's not going to be the best. Mega Agron is not going to be wanting to switch into. And other than that, if you're turning off rest for Mega Agron, that might be a bit of an issue. Um, so that's something to think about for sure. Um, as for speeds, speeds are actually honestly not too bad. Um, you want Miss Majors at 105, and then jumping up to Taunty at 20, uh, 121. But then other than that, you know, you drop down, you get to 100, you get to 97, 92, 86, um, 85. Um, and then it kind of drops off after that. But honestly, that's not too bad. Um, definitely, bet I feel like, one of the better speeds that we've seen. Certainly no top-end cap like we've seen with Mayo Lopany and uh, Dragapult. But it's a little bit more, like, kind of hard to speed creep. Um, so... I think that's pretty solid, um, and then, yeah, it's it's more so the fact that the team is very physical. Um, the two top end support pieces between Taunty and Tapu Fini are very good, but they and are special attackers in theory, but oftentimes will try to play more of a supporting role. Um, I guess Tapu Fini tends to go more offensive nowadays. Um, maybe I'm capping on that one. I'm used to it being more of a defensive piece, um, but. Uh, Tapu Fini does tend to be more of a setup sweeper nowadays with Cart Mind and Draining Kiss and all that good stuff. But Taunty usually tends to play more of a defensive piece. So your main special attack is going to be Tapu Fini. And then the occasional Miss Magius. Or Rotom Frost. Or Celebi. Like, the team much leans, much more leans into that physical side. Um, but at least does it a bit better than the previous team in Vitrina's. Um... It actually has special attackers that I can see reasonably coming. Um, in terms of a hazard game, um, it, Mega Agron is an incredible stealth rocker, and even if you don't want that, it's, uh, you want Crocodile and Celebi as well, you can set up hazards. No spikes or anything, just those two, um, but I think that's honestly not too bad. Like, you know, then your removal is mainly coming down to Taunty, but 
Tapu Fini and uh, Rotom Frost can do it as well. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Rotom Frost. I'm not the biggest fan of the defensive typing, just because they, they, it prefers to play more of an offensive role. Um, just because Electric Ice is a bit of an awkward defensive typing, but offensively, obviously, it's incredible. Um, but it means it, it less wants to play the bulky support role that the Rotoms are very good at. Um, so, you know, it has three defoggers that it can reasonably do. Um, especially one of them being amazing at it. Um, Finny, if it's defogging, means it's playing more of a bulky support role, which means the special attacking potential is down on the team, which is scary. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, the team just doesn't... It also feels... I don't know why, it just feels so... Like, you look at the top and you see just bulk city. Um... And the team is fairly bulky, but then it just also feels like it's not that offensive at times, which feels crazy to say. But it's got three main really powerful physical attackers between Embor and Crocodile and Haxorus. And then without a bit of extra setup, it really doesn't do that much damage. Um, I mean, his mages will usually need a nasty plot to really get the damage going. Celebi kind of was saying uh, will need a bit of an extra oomph to get that damage going. Um, and even Tapafini and Torn need the extra oomph to get a, a boost or some or an item to really get the, the damage that like really needs to break teams open, so I don't know. But the team is still very good. Can't deny that. Um pretty solid has a game, pretty solid uh, removal, great type synergy. Um maybe a little concerning for some electric types, but then you've got Crocodile and Celebi, so it's not, you know, the worst thing. It's just the top two, really, uh, that make it a little concerning, um, between the bulky core. Um, but Crocodile is always a great Pokemon. Um, Celebi is always a good, uh, Celebi, will, I'm hoping will prove to be a good Pokemon. I really hope so, because I actually quite like Celebi. Uh, in theory, it make, it seems really good, but it's just the times for weakness, the book can sometimes hold it back a bit too much. So, um, I do hope this team does well. Um, but we're going to be putting it in B tier alongside Vitrina, um, but just a little bit above. Um, uh, just because the special attacking team, uh, the special attacking presence of the team is at least a little bit more uh, prevalent. Um, and overall, I kind of prefer some of the mons on this team overall. So. Besides the Wish Passer, because the Wish Passer compared to Flawless is nowhere near as good. But, you know, here we are. Excuse me for stretching. <sighs> so. Again, sorry if I'm not able to articulate myself very well. It feels like I'm not doing a great job with that. Um, anyway, moving along. Next up, we have... The OK Boomer Chandeliers. Um... This is, I believe, Shandy. Um, again, someone else that Rat knows quite well, so I will not speak on that too much. But their team, on the other hand, I can definitely speak on. It consists of Landorus Ferian, Corviknight, Curum, Cinderace, Primarina, Hit on top, Skuntank, Poltegeist, Maractus, and Mega Pinsir. This team be good. This team be very good. Um, now, immediately I disregarded Maractus. Apparently, Rat told me Maractus is not a terrible Pokemon. Because it gets spikes. Um, I think there would be better Pokemon. at you know, that low tier grass type. Because I, I think they actually have extra points. Yeah, they have three extra points. Um, and they chose Maractus other than... Some of the other lower tier uh, grass types they can actually set hazards. Where are they? Um, such as Grottle uh, and uh, Quilladen, um, which can both set hazards and especially spikes. Quilladen can actually do um, at that low, low uh, price point, and I believe actually um, they would be able to still afford. If I'm not, maybe I'm stupid, or maybe they just actually have a reason for Maractus over it, or maybe they just prefer it. I'm not sure, but they have three points left over. And they still have this great of a team. Um, really, one of the only things that's holding it back for me, personally, is the fact that there's free flying type. But, Corviknight only 
is only weak to fire and electric. And Landorus isn't weak to either of those. Landorus is only weak to water and ice. Um, Mega Pinsir is weak to a billion things, but Mega Pinsir also have this thing where it just kills everything. Um, the speeds are also really nice. It tops off at Cinderace at 119, still very reasonably high speed. Then it drops down to Mega Pinsir, very reasonable speed. And then I believe it goes to Landorus, uh, no, it goes to Curum, and then Landorus Furion, um, and then to Skuntank. Yeah. So pretty reasonable speeds. We've already kind of talked about Kirim a little bit in this video. Um, you know, Kirim does just kind of win games. Um, <laughs> especially with the option to give it a spike support with the Maractus, I guess. Um, just a little bit of chip will help bring uh, br bring some teams down to Kirim. It will break teams wide open. That's what Kirim does. Um, Landorus Furion is an incredibly versatile Pokemon. I used it to great effect last season. And in multiple seasons, <laughs> Landorus Furion is a Pokemon I know very well. Um, it's great at being offensive and defensive and great pivoting, which is something this team really excels at, actually. Um, between Landorus Furion, Corviknight, Cinderace, and Primarina, it has some great fast and slow pivoters, and even middle, uh, like middling upper speeds between with Landorus Furion as well, um, to get into some of the other Pokemon like Kyurem and Mega Pinsir that are going to break the, some teams wide open. Uh, Mega Pinsir is a Pokemon you have to be ready for, and so is Kyurem. Um And even Poltergeist, you have to be ready for Poltergeist as well. I kind of mentioned Spectre a lot as a you know a, a, as as a scary ghost type that you have to be ready for, and Poltergeist is kind of the same deal, because if you don't have anything for a shell smashing Poltergeist, you can just lose. Um, Skun Tank is also a very reasonable Dark and Poison type that can defog. Um, it doesn't have too much going for it outside of that. I believe it can boom, so you can get in stuff for free. Uh, Hitmontop is also a Pokemon I quite like. It gives the team rapid spin options, um, as well as a very defense as defensive or offensive fighting type. Something, again, I'm quite the big fan of. This team really, um, it's also got, you know, it's got great removal, you know, with the uh, Landorus and the Corviknight and the Skuntank and the Hitmontop. Great removal, which is great for that Mega Pinsir that can't actually hold the boots so I can get in safely. Granted, it only takes 25% in initially when it starts with regular Pinsir before Mega Evolving. Um, but even still, uh, maybe it means you can free up the boots from the Cinderace and give it a more offensive item like a Life Orb or a Choice Band even. Um, Cinderace is a Pokemon that I'm really starting to see the, the value of recently due to its speed. Uh, ability to run Super Fang to break down even the bulky waters that want to come in against it, um, and just be able to clean up with that amazing speed late game. Primarina, obviously an incredibly scary special attacker. Um, you know, it turns out when you have physical and special attackers that are both very scary, you've kind of got to be ready for both. Uh, Corviknight can just win games, Corviknight's a pain to break. The team just has so many great Pokemon that actually work well together between all the pivoting and great offensive potential. Um, Really, the main issue with the team is its hazards itself. Like, the removal is good, but the actual hazard setting, it's Landorus and a Maractus. And that's it. A Yolando T is the only Stillfrocker on the team, and Maractus is the only other hazard setter, period, on the team. And again, until I get proven, I think I've even been proven wrong, to be fair, week one, Amaractus actually did come. Um, but even still, like, that's, that's it for hazards. So, that's really the only thing I can say about this team. Otherwise, it is very scary, it's very offensive, it's got great speeds, it's got great bulk. I'd say less so than some of the other teams that we've seen, you know, like, in terms of, like, bulky cores. Um, like, it's got more bulky attackers, um, and less about defense, a uh, dedicated defensive pieces, which is a thing. Um, as a result, like, bolt beam coverage, while, you know, still very good, uh, and not the most common, to be honest, can really break through, you know, Corviknight and Landorus very, very easily, um, and, and even Primarina, and then it's, I feel like the team may struggle sometimes with its bulk, um, so that, that may be a concern, 
but other than that, like the team is still very, very strong. I can't dock it too much, um, but it will be going in A tier, our first A tier. I hate myself for messing up the caps. Um... So yeah, uh, let me, there we go, uh, so yeah, really, I, I'm a, I'm a fan of this team a lot, I think it's, can do, it's, I think it's can do very, very well, um, at least on paper, like, just all the pieces seem to just work well together, as well as some extremely scary setup threats between, uh, Pinsir, Landorus, honestly, Sub is just more, enough of a setup for Kirim to be scary, Body Press, Core Knight, Primarina can calm mind and shell, sm shell smash Poltergeist, as well as the pretty reasonable defensive pieces. It's just the hazard gains a bit off, um, which I think really is one of the main things docking this team down, as well as triple flying is a bit awkward. So, anyway, this is where the video would end, but we're going to do this all in one take. Because originally I would split this up into two parts, but we're doing this all in one take, so here we are. So, because we've got 12 coaches to get through, we've already got through 6, let's go on to number 7, being the Fairfax Relegators, coached by Eris, which I don't believe has actually been in singles, I don't think they were in singles last season, so it's a new coach in terms of singles, but definitely not new to UBL, UBL they've been around for so long, so. Um, but they are new to singles. And their team consists of Mega Charizard X, Clefable, Grimmsnarl, Silvalli, Tapu Koko, Quagsire, Venusaur, Corsola Gallo, uh, Persimian, and Golurk. This team unfortunately needs some work. Um, it really does. Um, first off, let me say I love Mega Charizard X I had it last season, and I loved it to bits. Um, one of, if not my favourite Megas, just because it literally can just win the game on its own. But it does need support. Um, it does need mainly removal. <laughs> um, and this team's removal is Selvali and Tapu Koko, in, for in terms of both of them getting Defog. That's it. It needs more than that. Um, so. The team also just straight up likes a steel type. And saying the team has three poison weeks between all three fairies. It's a bit of an issue. I understand wanting the really fast electric type in Tapu Koko. But, you know, then you've got Clefable, which is an amazing Pokemon. And then Grimmsnarl. Which I, I, I want to believe is good, I genuinely do. But this team needs a steel type. It just needs a steel type to help patch up the poison and even just steel in general. Um well steel's not as bad, it's mostly just the poison types, but you know, then you can argue well there's Silvali. Silvali is not an easy Pokemon to use, especially in draft, because you've gotta know what type to bring, you've gotta know what moveset to bring, do you wanna just go with like parting shot defog stuff? Which you can absolutely do, but it's also much more than that. Um, you don't really want to be just running Silvalli Steel, which is technically the best Silvalli. You don't want to be running it every week. Um, you want to be able to have the flexibility of running it as a different type when, need when needed. Um, again, when I was talking about types earlier, this is just one of the teams that really shows its flaws, unfortunately. Um, with Double Ghost and Triple Fairy. Um, Double ground as well, like, um, though I'm not going to knock Quagsire, I think Quagsire is a very solid bulky water type, which the team definitely wants. Um, Venusaur is also a bit of an odd pick, uh, Venusaur definitely thrives with Sun, um, which I think regular Ninetale is available, which uh, would certainly help make a Venusaur a bit more, but again, then you're looking for more removal options because you need more removal. Um, Speaking of hazards in general, to my knowledge, it's just Clefable, and that's it. Uh, it's quite I know doesn't get Stealth Rocks, so you're pretty much looking at Clefable. I think Corsola as well, I think Corsola gets Stealth Rocks, 
the only other Pokemon I can see getting it is Golurk, which I will check right now for us. But even then, even if Golurk does get Stealth Rocks, which it does, I would also just check Corsola while I'm here. That's regular Corsola, much worse Pokemon, so. Um, I believe it does get Stealth Rocks. Yes, so, you know, Corsola's not a bad Stealth Rocker. Golurk I would not call a good Stealth Rocker. And then there's Clefable. Um, so, the hazards are alright, it's okay. The removal is, I would consider, not bad, but for a team with Charizard X, I can't, in con good conscience, say it's good. You need more than just Coco and Silvalli, especially because Coco is such a... Coco and Silvalli are two Pokemon that are extremely versatile in what they want to do. Again, two Pokemon that are very difficult to use in draft. And Clefable and Grimstone, there's a lot of difficult Pokemon to use. And even I would argue Mega Charizard X is quite difficult to use in draft. Because you've got to know when to get it in and when to set it up. Clefable, you've got to pick the right set for every week. Grimstone, you've got to pick the right set for every week. Silvalli, you've got to pick the right set for every week. Because all, uh, and Coco, same deal. All these Pokemon, ha you have to pick the right move set for and the right way to use them that week. Um, They're very difficult Pokemon to use. Um... And combining them all together, it it just all just doesn't really fit well. Again, the team needs a steel type badly. Um and so Valley Steel can cover that, but again it wants to do some other things otherwise, you know, just going with you know, sticking with the normal typing and just going for a life orb and just going in with multi-attack. So um as the speeds Jumps from Mega Charizard X to Tapu Koko. We've seen similar things like this where the base 100 is just jumping up. Um, so, <laughs> I guess I can't knock it too much because a lot of teams have done this. Um, but then you've got, you know, you've got your Savali at 95 and then uh, dropping down to... What is that? Uh, Venusaur at 80? As well as Persimian, which I quite like Persimian. I think Persimian is a pretty solid fighting type in draft, to be honest. Um, just because it breaks open teams sometimes. With a Choice Scarf, it can really go in. Um, I would also say the team definitely leans on its physical side as well. It's another team that kind of leans on its physical side. Um, but even if you just look at the stats in general, especially like on the physical side, like, oh, sorry, on the special side, you really don't see the, the special offense because it's the highest special attack Pokemon is Mega Charizard X, which is a physical attacker. <laughs> They're tough claws. And then you've got regular Venusaur, which thrives in Sun, which the team doesn't have. And then you've got a bunch of 95s between Grimstar, who's a physical attacker, a Fable, who's more of a support Pokemon most of the time, Savai, who I think tends to go more on the physical due to multi-attack, but can go special, um, and then Tapu Koko, which is definitely more of a special attacker for sure. Um, but, yeah. The team definitely needs some work. Again, I think a good, uh, a good Steel type would really help. Uh, I think one that I believe is left on the board that was just last time. Uh, Fat Rat wasn't the biggest fan of the suggestion, but I, well, I, I suggested it, so I am. Uh, it's actually Cabalion. Cabalion is on the board, um, which if you drop Grimmsnarl and maybe something else down by one point, um, would actually um, really help because then you actually have something that can resist poison no, no, or means poison. There isn't one of the two ground types. Um, I'm Go looks pretty solid, to be honest. So is Quagsire. They're solid Pokemon, it's just they don't quite synergize well here. Quagsire and Mega Charizard X synergize really well. It's one of my favorite parts of this team, to be honest. And even Tapu Koko as well. Those three Pokemon really work well together. Um, it's just kind of the rest of them just don't really quite fit as well. Um, with the multitude of fairy, uh, the multitude of fairy types in general and ghost types. Um, the team also will need some form of hazards, so it can't exactly drop Clefable, and you don't really exactly want to drop Clefable, but then it's like, well, you need you still need a fast electric type that can rem uh, and you need removal. The team just needs so much to kind of boost it up to, like, anything, like, in the upper tiers, that it does have to be in C tier, and it is going to be behind a uh, Lego. So... Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I understand this is also Eris' first singles draft. So I completely understand, you know, if, if you know, 
the team being on the weaker side. This is something just to learn from, in my eyes. Um, but also, maybe it's just Pokemon you enjoy using, by all means. Um, so, but there's just Pokemon here that don't have the best synergy. Um, and could do with some improvements. Like I say, swapping Grimmsnarl out and maybe a couple other Pokemon to kind of make room for something like Cabalion and maybe get some extra removal, uh, swap out Venusaur for something, um, and then either Golurk or Corsola Gala um, for something else. Um, just kind of build, build up the removal so you have a lot of removal options and then also just kind of make sure there's at least, you know, something else can set Stealth Rocks. I think you're golden, so... Next up, um, we have... Oh, it's myself. Oh, dear. Here we go. Oh, dear. Now, I'm glad... In a way, I'm glad I'm recording this because I can at least say a bit better things about my team. But at the same time, this is also my team. So my team, for those who haven't seen it, it consists of Mew, Escadrill, Rotom Heat, Moongus, Gigalith, Aromatease, Mega Blastoise, Scrafty, Turnus Incarnate, Ampom, and Gabite. So, it's a team. Um, at least before playing my first match, I really wasn't that big of a fan of it. Um, but I've actually grown to like it a little bit more. Um, let's talk about the negatives first. The team speeds are a bit weird. <laughs> Due to the fact that it's got Aromatease, Gigalith, and Amoongus, it's got some incredibly slow Pokemon. Um... And then after that, you know, you've got your you, your upper end is Amberpom and Torneus Incarnate, which can't really spam Hurricanes in Sand. Though I justify as saying I needed a flying type. Please give me a break. There's no other good flying types that I wanted. Um, you know, and then you've got Mew, which is an incredibly versatile Pokemon. Not the easiest to use. But really, this team comes down to one thing on paper. And that is, can you deal with Excadrill in Sand? If the answer is yes, you're going to have a better time against this team than most. And if you can't, you may just lose. Because it's, that's just the way Excadrill and Sand just works. Um, I will say, just straight up, the uh, this the part with, we just say, Excadrill, Rosem Heat, Amoongus, Gigalith, and Mega Blastoise are actually parts of the team I actually do quite like. The defensive and offensive synergy between Amoongus, Rotom Heat, and Blastoise is really good. Mega Blastoise is a Pokemon I actually am really excited to use personally, um, and hope I can utilize in certain ways. Um, I even showed this off in my week one match, uh, in a definitely an interesting way to use Mega Blastoise, um, so hopefully I can use it in some interesting ways again. Um, but for the most part, like, on paper, you've got to be ready for Excadrill. Mew, you've kind of just got to hopefully have the right answers to, to the right Mew set. Mew is a Pokemon that's very difficult to prepare for. Um, but saying you're pretty much preparing for that in Excadrill and Sand, and then just the reasonable support pieces kind of surrounding it. You know, you got Aromatease, which is an okay Wish Passer, which you have to look at subjectively, unfortunately. I hate this stupid thing. I hate how it looks. It's stupid. I hate it. Um, Scrafty is a pretty nice, bulky defensive and offensive uh Fighting type, again, this is one that I quite like personally, so take that what you will. Um, again, uh, as for the types, types are fine. Um, I think there's own, there's own, the only repeat typing is actually the ground typing from Gabite and Excadrill, which Gabite is a pretty solid one-point Pokemon. But other than that, the types are pretty fine. There's no repeat typings other than that one uh, extra ground type, which I don't think they share any weaknesses for, so that's pretty good. Um, and then you've got the, uh, then, then the hazards. Hazards are a little weird because you've got, Gigalith is the main hazard setter in terms of Stealth Rocks. Um, Mew can set hazards, it can set all the hazards. Uh, it doesn't always want to do that, but it absolutely has the option to do so. Excadrill can set rocks, doesn't always want to do that. Uh, and Gabite will not always want to come, but it can set rocks. It's the removal that's really the good part of the team. Between Mew, and Excadrill, and Rodham Heat, and Mega Blastoise, and Tornadoes Incarnate. 
That's two rapid spinners and three defoggers. Welcome to what building my teams just looks like. It doesn't always, it's not always my intention, but here we are. It just happens. Um, so. The team has its flaws for sure. Um, because like I say, I think if you're ready for Excadrill in Sand, or uh, just Excadrill in general, I think the, the team becomes a lot easier to prep for. But I would say that things like uh, Gigalith actually do really good damage. Um, Mega Blastoise does really good damage. Twins Incarnate can do pretty good damage and can also run nasty plot sets as well. Rotom Heat can do pretty good damage. Mew something is just super scary to prep for because what are you, how how are you prepping for Mew? Some people I've just heard just don't prep for Mew and just say, and just wing it. Um, <laughs> I just say we'll see what happens because it's just not worth thinking about prepping for Mew. Um, so, um. Yeah, if you want to hear more about my thoughts about this team, especially now after I played week one, um, I actually felt pretty uh, pretty okay with the team, at least going into a match with it. Um, so, if you want to hear more about that, go check out my other video. But, to not make this go on for any longer, we're actually going to be putting this team in the B tier, um, above Fedora and Vitrina, uh, because it actually has special attackers, <laughs> um, and a better synergistic kind of deal overall um good amounts of removal reasonable uh, pretty solid type synergy um yeah let me just look at uh shandies and just not shandies uh maybe yeah it's got more more reasonable special attackers a better overall has a game in terms of like actual removal um, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's a fine team, um, it's certainly not too bad, um, definitely I'm, I'm hoping to at least make waves with this, um, at least now, now that I actually have grown to like the team a bit more, so. Again, check out my other video talking about my team, if you want to understand why I actually don't mind the team now, or initially I really just did not like it, <laughs> so. Anyway, next up, we have, we only have four teams left. We have the Southern Sandslash, which I believe is a returning coach, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not, it's Tyler. I think Tyler's actually been part of VGC, actually. Um, so... Um, and are coming to singles. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm a bit dumb. Probably that one. But their team consists of Latios, Infernape, Veriform, Sylveon, Galvantula, Ditto, Mega Aerodactyl, Haunter, Palaswine, Wishcast, Wishcash, and Mega Sharpedo. So let me just get my... Okay. So why do we say that about this team? Um, trying to think, because this team actually looks pretty. So oh, the team doesn't have a bulky water. Uh, that's why we said this team wasn't as good. That makes sense. Um, I feel like this team actually has the opposite problem. <laughs> Just looking at it on paper, you know how we were saying like all the teams are physical. This team feels like it's the opposite of that where the, the physical this time isn't there as much. Because it's got Mega Sharpedo, an Infernape, an Aerodactyl as like main physical attackers. And that's it. Um, and then there's the removal, which is pretty much just Latios. It, like you've got Defog, uh, Defog Aerodactyl, and that's it. <laughs> I do have another tab like the initial tierings that me and Rat made, which is you know why I was like, wait, what's what's so bad? Oh no, it's it's again, it's it, it's one you kind of look at for more than like you know two minutes, and then you realize you know some of the flaws. The speed on this team is really incredible in theory, but a lot of it's kind of clumped together. You got three Pokemon, you got your, your Latios, your Galvantula, and you uh. Infernape all kind of really clumped at 108 to 110. 
Mega Sharpedo has been there at 105, but Mega Sharpedo will often be getting a speed boost before it actually Mega Evolves and gets that speed up. So that doesn't really matter as much. And Aerodactyl is obviously faster than most. And then you drop down to Haunter, which can do things, I guess. Apparently went on a tear and won the least of the rat that the fat rat's in for a match. Apparently got five KOs. Um strange to hear. But for the most part, Haunt is going to be not doing that much most of the time. You know. It is a worse Gengar in theory. Um and the team having webs, honestly, strangely enough, doesn't really help that much because a lot of Pokemon are already extremely fast. Um and the things that are going to be helped by webs are like a fast Sylveon. And that's about it. <laughs> webs actually don't really help this team that much because everything's so fast. Um, and pretty much just has its main defensive pieces between Sylveon and Ferrothorn, but Sylveon definitely wants to do more than just be a defensive piece. Ferrothorn's a great defensive piece and gives the team, you know, Stealth Rocks and Spikes, which the team definitely wants for those, uh, like, breakers between, uh, breakers and cleaners with Infernape and Latios and Mega Sharpedo. Um, but that's the main setters uh, in, in terms of Ferrothorn. Webs don't help this team that much, and otherwise you've got Pyoswine for rocks, which is fine for rocks, no problem. Um, Inferno can set rocks, and Aerodactyl can set rocks, but those two aren't really Pokemon that ideally want to be setting rocks. They want to be doing other things, like breaking faces. <laughs> um, um, though, to be fair, this team does have the most powerful Pokemon. It does have Wishcash. Uh, so that means you just automatically have a 6-0 win against Fat Rat. Um, just doesn't matter. You just win against Fat Rat. Uh, so, you know, that's that's pretty solid, I'd say. Um, uh, UBL's never going to lift that down. There's the fact that just Rat just lost to a Wishcash. Um, so, yeah. The team, it feels like it needs a bit more physical offense. It feels like it needs removal. Um, and really could do with a bulky water type, um, that sure there's the Mega Sharpedo, there's the offensive water type, but you can have multiple Pokemon on a team with the same typing and do m different roles, which is team needs a bulky water type because, you know, like, water plus ice coverage is a bit scary at times for this team. You know, you know, if, if Ferrothorn goes down, just a water type with... Just, like, if if Ferrothorn goes down, Starmie wins the game. <laughs> Starmie. That's not a top-end Pokemon. That's just a, what is it, like, 13, 14 boy Pokemon that just wins the game. Just a Water-type with Ice-type coverage just wins the game here. That's not, that's not a good thing. Um, Ditto is obviously a hard Pokemon to evaluate. I'm not going to touch too much on Ditto. Um... It's a Pokemon I'd love to try at some point, to be honest, um, but I can't really evaluate too much on Ditto. Pretty much it just means you just don't get set up on, which is nice for a team that tends to, that looks this offensive, um, but as a result, it just doesn't have really great defensive switching in pieces that aren't just named Ferrothorn or Pile Swine. Um, Sylveon, again, can do it, but oftentimes it wants to perform, it wants to perform other roles, um, you know, Specs, uh, Hyper Voices wants to break teams and it can't really perform a defensive role if it wants to spam specs Hyper Voices, so. It's a very aggressive team with few defensive pieces. The few defensive pieces are pretty reasonable between Pilus Y and uh, Sylveon when he goes on defensive and most notably Ferrothorn, but I'd say that means that the backbone of this team is pretty much carried by Ferrothorn and if Ferrothorn goes down, again, the team just basically loses to a water type. So. But. It does still have better type synergy overall and better offensive p potential um, than Eris. So we're going to be putting Tyler above Eris. Um, and the Southern Sandslash. Um, again, I think there's some pretty easy fixes for this team. It's get some better defensive pieces and a bulky water type. <laughs> and, a better, and some better removal. And the team is pretty solid. Um, because the offensive potential between Latios and Fernape is not to be underestimated. Uh, Calpantula 2, excuse me for stretching. Sorry. Um, the offensive power of this team is pretty good. Um, but its physical attack is Omega Sharpedo, 
I think Third Ape and that's it. Um, so, you know, that's a thing. Um, and I guess Aerodactyl, sorry, I do apologise. Just don't really see Aerodactyl ever do anything without it holding a Megastone. So, um, yeah, uh, that is... That is where I put this team, uh, and again, where we decided to put it beforehand, so. Um, yeah, that is about it, so let's move on to the next team. Three teams left, not too much to go now. We've got the Launderdale Feather Dancers. Um, this is a new coach for sure. This is Hunch, I believe. Um, yep, this is Hunch. Um, new coach to the league, don't really know anything about them, do apologise, but their team's pretty good. It's got Mega Morwell, it's got Rillaboom, it's got Zerora, it's got Greninja, it's got Ladiat, it's got Mega Malta, it's got Nidoqueen, it's got Hibonchan, it's got Articuno, and it's got Clefairy. I'm going to say this out off the bat, um, people have tried to convince me Clefairy's good. I still don't see it, <laughs> but it's there I guess. Um... Pokemon that does interest me a lot, and has always interested me in draft, is Rillaboom. I think Rillaboom's a super versatile Pokemon for this team, um, and actually helps patch up some of the weaknesses for some of the Pokemon on this team. Um, it helps with uh, Mega Morwell and Zerora, which both are very, very scary Pokemon. Um, not Pokemon you can really underestimate, and are great at either, you know, Zerora being very fast and very annoying, giving this team a very top-end speed, and actually some of the best speeds we've seen in the league. Because you got the top-end uh, you got the top-end Zerora dropping down to Greninja, which is still 122 speed, super high, into Latias, which is still very high, but then it does drop uh, down to, uh, I think it's Rillaboom and uh, Articuno after that, so... You know, after that, it drops off a bit. Uh, kind of nothing in that 90s area. But even still, have su having such top in speed, and then you also got the priority between Mega Mall, Wild Sucker Punch, and Rillaboom Grassy Glide. And the team has some of the best speeds in the league by far. Um, so, that's nothing to scoff at. The team's offensive potential is very much there. It's then when we get to the defensive potential that the team starts to kind of show its flaws. Um, because I'm looking at Latias as the main holder of the defensive pieces together. Because Articuno can be defensive, but will just fall to Rock Froze, um, for the most part. Clefairy, I still don't see the massive value in. And that's it. That's your defense. As a result, the removal of this team pretty much comes down to Latias. Um, you've got Rapid Spin um, Hitmonchan as well for removal, which isn't the worst. Um, and then, as I say, Defog Articuno, um, again, not the worst. But for the most part, it's going to be Defog Latias, and that's massively underutilizing Latias for what it is. Though, to be fair, looking at this team, it is much more of an aggressive team, so utilizing the, you know, Getting rid of hazards isn't going to be this team's main priority for the most part. It's going to be setting them with the Greninja. Um, I'm going to double check. Does Greninja get toxic spikes? I know it gets regular spikes. Uh, this is going to be Torrent Greninja as well, not... Uh... It does get toxic spikes. So spikes and toxic spikes with Greninja. Um, as well as Neoquin actually have toxic spikes. One of the few times I've ever seen that you rarely see two toxic spike setters. But also just... The setters in general, like, it's, you, Greninja's obviously great for saying the, the spikes and the toxic spikes. But then the self-rock is Nidoqueen, and that's it. It's it's Nidoqueen and Morwile, I think, actually. And Morwile does not want to be staying self-rock ever. It's got way too much power output to be wasting its time staying self rocks. And to be fair, Nidoqueen does as well. And the Pokemon actually want to set the rocks. Like, want to be doing, you know, the damage. <laughs> so, um... The, the Pokemon don't want to waste time saying the hazard here. It's pretty much just Greninja that wants to do that. And even Greninja wants to, you know, kind of press buttons a bit. Um, and kind of do really good damage. So, well, or reasonable damage anyway. Um, so, the team's very good at just honestly chipping things down. Um, 
and getting things in range for certain sweepers, you know, or cleaners, things like, you know, you just get everything in range for Choice Band Rillaboom, or Zerora just cleaning up in the late game, or even Mega Mawile just cleaning up uh, with Sucker Punches, and just using the speed of the team really well. Mega Mortar, I haven't really talked about, but also a pretty great special attacker. Um, just does a lot of great damage, um, and could also even offer Belgium sets if you're really crazy. Um, the team's very, very strong in its offensive potential, and just can really force teams into chipping, getting chipped down between the, the hazards that mostly Greninja's going to be setting, which is weird to say, it's mostly going to be Greninja setting those hazards. So, um, nothing else is going to be doing it as well, because the other Pokemon just want to be hitting things. Um, and again, the removal... The hazard, the hazards are pretty much the only thing. The hazard, all hazard games, pretty much the only thing that's holding this team back. Um, because overall, we like to look at you know the overall capabilities of the team. And while this team is really good at being uh, chipping things down and forcing a lot of pressure on the opponent, if it gets on the back foot, it's not going to be able to recover that easily. So, you know, there's that is that is an issue with the team. Um, but. Because it's not just a pure hyper offensive team where it's just going to lead a hazard set, I die, and then just come in and just go in. Um, the, some of the pieces do have relative bulk to them, things like Rillaboom and Latias and Neoqueen, um, and has actual pivoting potential with the Rillaboom and the Zerora. Um, and some of the Pokemon are very much threatening and have to be respected for the most part. Because um, if you just don't have anything you can switch into Rillaboom, then you're done, or Zerora, you're done, or Mega Mawile, you're done, or even just to set up Latias. Um, but it just means the team can't be played in a more balanced style for the most part, uh, without be things being too predictable, um, so. But overall, I can't really doubt this team too much. This team is going in the A tier, but it is going below Shandy. Uh, I do tend to like Shandy's team a bit more because it has more of a balanced poten uh, style potential. It's not the team is balanced, it's the team that has potential to play in a more balanced style. Which is what I prefer, so. So, but this team is still very strong, um, and has great potential to do well, so LFD, LFD, so. Definitely a strong team and definitely want to be watching out for, so. A few minor changes could bump this team up even higher, but honestly, I, if, if the team is going to be playing this more aggressive manner, Maybe it's best to leave it the way it is. Um, the team is still very, very strong. Um, and I think looking at the difference between this team and my own, I think really shows the difference between B and A. Um, because this is a team that has solid pieces overall, as well as a couple of very threatening things. Whereas, you know, this team has a lot of threatening things that have to be respected uh, with a couple of, like, uh, notable downsides. Um, but not ones that can be penalised too much due to the other pieces of the team carrying it very well. So, hopefully you can at least see where tiering's coming from. If not, I do apologise. If you want further reasoning and you're in the UBL Discord, feel free to pop me a message. Maybe I can give more of a reasonable explanation. Um, so. Next up, we have the hello la lo la ho lo la 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 I don't know where I was going with that. It's Batrat and the la 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 I am actually trying to say this, I do apologise. The Aloha Alola Juice. Batrat, the final of the UBL mods, you know, besides myself and Lyric. Has a team. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the rats. They have Mega Deancey, they have Spectre, they have Garchomp, they have Buzzwall, they have Rotom Wash, Registeel, Vileplume, Umbreon, and Swoobat. I'm just going to take to about the out the occasion because uh, the equation because I'm not the biggest fan of it without terrain support. Um, why is that? Because uh, it has unburden, and unburden with electricity can actually really do well. Uh, not, not electricity. Electricity is the one I've seen it paired with, but like a, a, a terrain setter to give it to allow it to use a, one of the, the terrain items, the the seeds, the proc and terrain to give it a buffing stat. Um, usually do help Swoobat, so it can actually set up and sweep. In this team, not so much. But all you need to go do is go, wow, the top four are very, very good at being offensive. 
wow, the bottom four are really, really good at being defensive. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Is that's literally it. Um, the only s s criticism just initially is Rotom Wash is the only form of removal on this team that matters. Because Swoobat does not count. And Mega Diancy Manager Bounce doesn't really count that much. But that's it. The this Hazard setting is Garchomp, Mega Diancy, both Pokemon that are just absolutely want to run rocks, and Registeel that absolutely wants to run rocks. It's a dedicated rock setter. Like I say, the removal's a bit suspect, but then you just have the offensive and defensive potential. You've got Umbreon to keep your defensive pieces alive, things like Registeel and Rotom Wash would love a great bush passer like Umbreon, as well as Vital Plume. It's actually a pretty solid uh, grass type. Um, to be honest, uh, there was a point, I believe it was in Gen 6, um, might be wrong on this, but in Generation 6, I believe it was, um, Vile Plume was actually, like, the king of NU, um, because it was just a grass type that just, it was so hard to remove, um, and, you know, combine that with potential sleep powders, and if you're getting a sleep powder to let things like Spectre and Garchomp and Buzzwall to come in, you, you're gonna have a bad time, um, Diancy Plus Spe uh, Spectre is also a deadly combination. You have an incredibly offensive ghost, uh, incredibly offensive fairy type, excuse me, to go with the Spectre, who really does not like to go against those uh, those dark types. And any normal type that want to try and deal with that, well, <laughs> let me introduce you to Buzzwall, a Pokemon that I personally did very well with last se uh, in the last season that I played in, and can vouch for very much. So Spectre Plus Buzzwall is a deadly combination. Um, two very powerful Pokemon that absolutely have to re be respected. Garchomp, once again, another Pokemon that has to be respected. Swords and Scale Shot will just win the game on the spot if you're not ready. Um, and Diancy with a Rock Polish, while it's already got really high speed, sometimes it's all it needs to just win the game. Um, it does very, very, very good damage. Unreasonably high damage. Why does the thing do so much damage? Does die to a steel type, but then you've got great switchings like Registeel and Rotom Wash, and even Buzzwall, who can play a bulkier role. Both Garchomp and Buzzwall can play bulkier tank roles on the team. Buzzwall even just can be a dedicated physically defensive Pokemon sometimes. Um depending on the matchup. You know, if you if you are against Zygarde, which I don't think was actually drafted, uh Buzzwall does incredibly well into Pokemon like that. Um I can't say enough good. Um if this team had better removal, it would be going in S. But as it stands, it's going in A. Hopefully this team is very clear on why it's good. The offensive pieces work very, very well together. As well, some of the offensive pieces having utility between, you know, tanky Garchomps that are super bulky and not easy to take down. And do really good damage between the Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet and Stealth Rocks and roaring things out and all that good stuff. Um... And Buzzwall, due to its high HP and defense, can actually perform a defensive role with Sub and Toxic and Roost. Um, well, so just being able to do really good damage due to its naturally high attack, or can just really go on the offensive and break teams. Um, whereas Spectre and Diancy will just break holes in teams, and if you're not ready for Spectre, you're done. Meanwhile, the defensive pieces are not easy to break through. The only thing I would say is a fighting type might, might be an issue. But then you've also got to worry about Spectria or Buzzwall switching in and getting a free switch into those Pokemon can, and can just be game ending. So this team's going in A, it's going above Shandy. Um, this team literally would be S if it had better removal. That is it. Um, if it had bet if it had any other defogger that I thought could come to a game, it would be an S. But it as it stands, it goes in A. So <sighs> and that leaves our final team. Excuse me for stretching again. We have been at this for almost two hours, I think. I don't know what that was. I, if you heard a bang, I do apologize. That was just me knocking over a bottle of, bottle of soda. Whatever. Um, an hour and 40. Definitely quicker than the last, uh, than the last one, because uh, the, the full last two were... Uh, the full last one was at two and a half hours, so it definitely had a schedule. Um, we are here with the final team, the Mother Doers, coached by Campfire. So, their team consists of Melmetal, Dragonite, Weavile, Blissey, Mega Venusaur, Donphan, Pukamuku, Meloetta, Regieleki, and Orticorio. 
Now, we said this one with one other team, but his team needs a bulky water type. Bukumuku is not a bulky water type, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does not count. Um. Um. The offense, the top end offense is very much there though. Melmetal is a Pokemon that is unreasonable. Uh, Dragonite can just win games on its own. Weavile can also just win games on its own. Um. And actually, I do like Reval plus Regieleki. It's very, very good. But then you kind of think about this team a little bit more. And you look at Regieleki. And you go, alright, so you need to deal with ground types. So what's dealing with ground types on this team? And there's your reason for why I don't like this team. <laughs> You've got Mega Venusaur, and that's pretty much it on the defensive. And nothing else. Donphan can switch in, but it's not going to be doing a lot back. Weavile can't switch in, and Pukumuku is not that great of a Pokemon. Um, and then your flying types, you know, do still get hit by rock type moves. Oricorio is not that great of a Pokemon, unfortunately. I wish it was. Really wish it was, but it's not. The team does struggle with ground types, especially defensively. Um, and that's pretty much just because it doesn't have a bulky water type. Um, again, Pukumuku doesn't count. Um... The speeds, though, are a bit weird. Um, again, I like Weavile plus Regieleki, especially on that top end speed, because it means you have something fast that people have to outspeed. You have to outspeed Weavile. But then there's also Regieleki that's just going to outspeed you anyway, so what does it matter? Um, but then you drop down to 93 in Oricorio. More realistically, you drop down to 90 at Meloetta. That's a 35-point speed gap. And there's a lot of important speeds you're missing in there, such as base 100, which a lot of people have. We've talked about, you know, I think it was, what was it? Uh, is it Vitrina? Yes, Vitrina. Uh, we talked about Victini plus Megalopony. That's at least base 100 to, base, to 135. This, on the other hand, is base uh 90 to base 125 and while 125 is still really really high it's the fact that there's nothing at base 100 to really help it out um the team's bulk is still pretty solid um the team is super super bulky between melmetal mega venusaur blissey donvan so there's some really good bulky defensive pieces um and the hazards that it can set is pretty much just coming from Let's see and Don Fan, actually, never mind. Uh, I was going to say something, they, they were a bit better, but it's just Blissey and Don Fan. But they are two very good Stealth Rockers, to be fair. So, uh, you know, it's not like there's one Stealth Rocker and then what, and then like one or two that just have Stealth Rocks, but just don't want to come and set them. They are actual Stealth Rockers. But the Rumble is a bit suspect because it is going to be just Don Fan for the most part. Dragonite. In a similar vein to what I was just saying, can defog, but it doesn't want to a lot of the time. <laughs> it can. Um, same with Regieleki. It can rapid spin, but as I've kind of outlined, Regieleki doesn't fit here. I've used Regieleki in the past, and I've kind of seen where Regieleki can and can't work. And without a way to deal with ground types, this this is not a team that Regieleki can really function in that well. As a result, it just kind of loses out on a Pokemon that it, it, it just doesn't have. It doesn't have Regieleki, has, it doesn't have a bulky water type, Oricorio isn't that great of a Pokemon. Meloetta is a Pokemon I want to like, um, I think offensively it does really well, and I just have some really cool, you, you know, it can go with a cool pirouette form. Um, but also, that also means that because there's basically no Regieleki like because it, it doesn't function nearly as well on this team as it could. Meloetta and Mega Venusaur are going to be the main special attackers of this team and once again going to be another team that is mostly physical. Um, because the other issue is you've got Pukin Buku and Blissey that both just don't do damage. You've got two Pokemon that literally just don't do damage on the team. So, but the team's offensive potential is absolutely there. The speeds are very good and the bulk is something that really helps save this team um at least from uh putting it any lower than the top of c tier so um 
the team has a quite a few flaws just because of team composition making it so some pokemon are irrelevant essentially um i think with a better bulky water the team just becomes better in general um and some actual special attackers um the because Mega Venu plays more a defensive role anyway, so it doesn't really get to use all of that massive special attack. And as a result, it's pretty much just Meloetta, because Regilek, he can't really function here. And even if it could, that's still it. That's still your special attackers between Mel Meloetta and Regilek for the most part. So, because there's just two Pokemon on this team that just literally do not do damage. And then you've got three really strong physical attackers, which is really good. But then you've also got to worry about, you know... Burns and Intimidate and people actually just building more physically defensive Pokemon to help deal with, you know, the Dragonite and the Weavile and the Melmetal, which are the notable offensive pieces of this team, so. But yeah, that is going to do it. So, for the final uh, tier list, um, you can see here at the top we've got Lyric and Paraic. Me and Rat actually kind of talked about this a bit. It was very interchangeable. Kind of depends if you prefer the offensive or defensive uh, potential between the teams. Both have it, but de uh, defensively, and as a result, in a more balanced way, Lurik's team slightly edges out, but I wouldn't say Paraic's team is much far behind. Um, the tiers really do reflect a big gap between the teams. Um, Rat has a major flaw in their team, um, but is still extremely strong, keeping it an A tier, followed by Shandy and Honch. Two teams that have very, very strong teams and have very uh, good components of their teams that really synergize well together. Just have a few flaws that are holding them back. B tier, myself, uh, into Fedora, into Vitrina. Teams with some strong pieces, but also have some flaws holding, uh, mul multiple flaws holding them back. Um, most of the fact that, you know, Fedora and Vitrina have more physical teams and mine just doesn't really look like it synergizes, synergizes well together, to be honest. Um, but has enough synergistic pieces that do work well together um to keep them above c tier um and then c tier has teams that have uh, some significant improvements that can be made to help salvage them um you know it's simple and, and a lot of them aren't hard it's like you know tyler you know have have faster pokemon that don't have a uh, that don't rely on rain um and maybe a, i think it was a bit better removal i think i do apologize if i'm messing that up um campfire you know just a bulky water type better ways to deal with ground types overall and actual actual special attackers um eris um get a steel type <laughs> please and swap out some of the fairies um and um lego what do we say about lego because I, I i do apologize um loi i won't swap some of these around there we go that's why i was confused um a lego is rain Lego was rain. Uh, who did I mean then? Tyler? Oh, Tyler was actually just like get special attackers. Uh, not special, physical attackers and like bear removal and actual better defensive pieces. Again, sorry if I butchered a lot of this. If you want any extra breakdowns and whatever, just DM me on Discord and I'll try and respond in a reasonable manner. Whether that actually happens or not is another question because I am asleep like literally half the time. But I will try to get back to people as soon as possible. Regardless, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Peace.